I am Couch Goop and welcome to my Still Holds Up series. We had Mad Max last week. We're looking at Spider-Man 2018. What a year for PS4 games that was. This is running on the 5. So just to clarify, this is the bog standard, not the remastered original Spider-Man. There's Miles Morales and a remastered version of this, which we will get to at some point. Just super quickly, this is where a bigger YouTuber would make you listen to an advert about Raid Shadow Legends for a minute and a half. I just want to say thank you again to my Bedrock audience. These are the guys that give me the 400 500 views on every video you guys are so awesome thank you so much and you completely motivate me to keep going and to put out good offline single player content which is a huge passion of mine up against the couch co-op material the sandbox genre in general is a huge passion of mine and let's look at that 2018 year because my god there was some mammoth releases on the open world format front one of them being Red Dead Redemption 2. And we also had Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Origins, which was a very high profile release for that year. So poor old Spider-Man not only got neglected by myself because I was so busy with these other titles, including Monster Hunter World, and we had God of War as well released on the PlayStation 4 as an exclusive. That was a hell of a year. But Spidey had to compete with some of the biggest sandbox games in the industry. When the original Spider-Man, i.e. the game we're looking at now, landed on my desk, I was like, yeah, great, Marvel game, great. But at the back of my mind, I was thinking, this isn't really doing anything wrong. And it's got that Batman Arkham combat. They've lifted perfectly the rope swing from the PlayStation 2 games and the mission structures and objectives seem all to be in the right place. But that wasn't enough back then. I had to get on with the bigger and larger games to push out content on the channel we also had fallout 76 come in just afterwards so it was understandably neglected and a little bit like mad max this thing has shone the older it's got we're going to go through some of the reasons it still gets me excited and that nostalgia when i first booted it up and saw spidey go down an alleyway with that amazing rope mechanic that new mars morales really does have some top end tech in it so there is quite a big jump between these two games this still looks really good though as far as i'm concerned it holds up quite well after five years our streets are now filled with aspiring gangsters each trying to out psycho the other let's talk about his playstation 5 performance as a base level game it does have the options for quality mode and frame rate and this was all in quality mode it captured at 59.9 frames per second but i don't think it was pegged it's not advertised as a peg 60 on the 5 i did see a tiny bit of pop in here in the distance though got over to it and it kind of filled in there are no performance issues anywhere on this game when you play it on the playstation 5 and i distinctly remember the pro not having any major issues either I wanted that to be one of the first things that I touch on is the game's look and feel with this rope mechanic. When you actually go down that first alley, the game opens in motion, giving you a cutscene and then you're live, you're in. It's an amazing in-engine moment. When I played it on my PlayStation 4 for the first time, I really sat back and thought this machine is extremely powerful. Spider-Man perfectly demonstrated that with that opening. It was incredible and I won't forget it for a long while. The reflections in this 2008 version are not terrible. You're not in them and they're a little bit static and you can clearly tell that they're not some of the advanced engine tech that we see in modern open world games. You just had Cyberpunk release some of its brand new RTX high-end PC visuals in my car, but still, you're looking at five years of development. That's a very, very long time in the grand scheme of things, especially with open world games. Oh, thank God, I need a drink. We'll all drink tonight, Yuri. So visually for that year, it was kind of the talking point. And you can imagine all of the hype prior to it coming out. It was going to be a very large release and it had everything in the right place for a huge fail. And I'll tell you what completely bolstered its position was this flawless Batman Arkham combat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's kind of a chain system. You don't really have a lock on. It's whoever's in front of you and you can link up moves and you start sort of drifting over it to people to sort of connect combos but so much of it's made more interesting in the Spider-Man canon because of that web work and because of all of that jumpery and the fact that you could knock people clean off the top of skyscrapers, whack up against the wall in the web. Too much fun is had with this combo. The subject matter also has very little to do with the Sam Raimi films, which some of which I do like. The early ones were pretty cool, but I like the idea that it's fleshed out. Some of the comic villains that haven't featured in the films, and they're really good. Spider-Man 
villains are some of the more intuitive villains you'll see in the Marvel comic back catalog. Just like Arkham 1 and Arkham City, the Batman games, there's two things that make this combat super interesting. One of them is the non-lethal aspect, meaning that the game doesn't have to have an R rating and you've got innovative ways of incapacitating people. That is so much more fun than a clean headshot. The second is that you're not carrying a firearm and you have to avoid said individuals that have them. This activates urgency and means that you're at a blatant disadvantage and the enemy has range and you have to close gaps really quickly. It's a system that works and makes you prioritize targets and gives the whole fight a sort of staged level. You've got to go after the people that are gonna give the most damage from as much distance straight away. That's it, huh? I've had worse commutes. It's also not afraid to be very cinematic in places. And that's quite a hard thing to do in an open world sandbox game. You saw that car chase earlier. A lot of fights will take place at the top of skyscrapers or in awkward ledges, meaning you can use the environments around you and having that projectile weapon that freezes or stops people in their tracks can prove very useful when it comes to in-depth combat. It's just me running up the Avengers Tower. The game doesn't have, per se, a day and night system. It does a clever thing where it places missions, main missions and sections of the game in set locked time periods. So this bit would always be at night, you have daytime. The game actually starts at a beautiful sort of 12 noon and you see vivid colors that you start missing after sort of the first quarter because you're slung into this perpetual night and then it swings back to a dawn or it's strange i do like it because it means that designers can really set up a scene but it doesn't feel too alive it's not like something you'd see in gta or red dead i take out the bad guys you make a break when it's clear sounds like a plan what it has smashed so well are the outfits and giving you access to outfits early doors and having some requiring side quests or research points to unlock. Some of them have individual buffs, particularly that outfit. They go right back to the retro Spider-Man look and also modern Marvel films and even some you would never have seen before. That was such a brilliant draw for me and having the gadgets, really smart little mechanical spiders and distractions, you can even cause yourself to go full Mirage a la Apex. <laughs> It doesn't do a bad job with side quests either, giving you quite a lot of variety and jobs to do. You come with a camera and because you're Spider-Man, the missions are very intricate and they'll have you climbing up the sides of buildings, <laughs> stalking people through their windows, taking pictures of individuals without their knowledge. The whole thing feels really in depth and having the ad hoc crime happen when you're moving around the city gives the game the genuine feeling that you are a superhero playing in a massive city. I think I said the bug was on vacation. Aww, you guys are like little kingpins in training. So cute. It's managed to handle the bosses and boss fights and stages quite well. Not giving you as many villains as I'd like to see in a Spider-Man game like this. I suppose they had to hold a few back and we do have the sequel just around the corner. But it's the set piece idea, some of the chases. You'll always have some cool angle or be given some excellent reward after fighting one of the main big boss villains. I totally forgot. I mean, I mean, I didn't forget, forget. I is there anything it doesn't do too well? Well, the city itself is a little bit cookie cutter. It does do a good job of giving you variety in cars and pedestrians, but nothing's really that destructible and you don't see too many different interactions with pedestrian NPCs. Yeah! <laughs> All right! That is definitely testament to the game's age and you know the industry now and because we've all played quite more advanced sandbox open world games but for what this was back in 2018 it's a goddamn winner and I think rumor has it it might even be appearing on the PlayStation Network for free next month so obviously <laughs> I've been Couch Coop and I will see you down there. <laughs>